The National Industrial Court of Nigeria has adjourned a suit filed by the federal government challenging the ongoing strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, till the 16th of September for further mention. At Monday's proceedings, the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project sought to join the suit as an interested party as its lawyer, Ebunlu Adeborua said that his client had filed a similar suit asking the court to compel the federal government to honor its 2009 agreement with the strike university lecturers. The action of the federal government is totally condemnable. In trying to abandon the negotiations that commenced already and not allowing that process to go through, we had filed an action on the 8th of September, before this same National Industrial Court, asking the court to compel the government to respect and enforce the agreements that is pending and binding on the parties. Because we're not giving a good impression to the entire world. If you willingly enter into agreements, and then for one reason or the other, one party to that agreement is not willing to abide by it, and is trying to use force and that's why it's important that we believe that the court would intervene to ensure that that agreement remains enforceable. And then once that is done, we can then talk about how lecturers can go back to the universities and then the schools will open. Because the state of the universities presently is totally decrepit. I am working with a lot of uh, alumni in my own former university building hostels doing a lot of things to ensure that the welfare of students and lecturers is something that can be uh, 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 proud of. So we can't allow a system whereby government abandons its own responsibilities, and then the money that is supposed to be used for infrastructure and the education of our children are being embezzled. How much is ASU asking for? What does it take to build the universities? So we believe that those of us who went through those universities, it was because of the commitment of government that we were able to attend those schools and we came out. Response, the federal government's lawyer Tijani Ghazali opposed Adeborua's application to consolidate the suit stating that Serap's application was premature as the case was billed for mention on Monday. All of you here are employees of your various organizations. You can't dictate to your organization how you will be paid. Your organization can decide to give you a check, can decide to pay directly into your account. One of their major issues is the issue of payment through either IPPIS or UTAS. We are saying that that cannot be dictated to government. We reserve the right to pay the way we believe is most appropriate in the circumstance. The 2009 settlement has been resettled in 2020. They are avoiding that of 2020 and always talking about the 2009. By the time we file all the necessary things, you will have it to see. Meanwhile, ferry lawyer Femi Falana, SAN, who represents ASU, said the Nigerian government often adopts dilatory tactics that have a way of prolonging strikes. There's no business coming here because the matter ought to have been resolved by now. And the government has just set up another committee of 14 members. That was done last week. So we're expecting their report. So when we were just suddenly told that the government had rushed to the uh, uh, court, I hope it's not a reaction to the suit by Sarah. What the law envisaged was that if you didn't work, you shouldn't be paid. But if I'm saying I am going to work, you know in the past, when a suit declared a strike, the members always covered lost ground and they're going to do so this time. So there shouldn't be any blackmail here. Because when the government says there's no money, but you know there's money in the country. But it's a question of priority. Does the government, has the government given attention to education? And we must run a country where agreements are observed by governments under the rule of law. Because once the government has signed an agreement with us and is registered in the Ministry of Labor, it's binding on the government. But the government has a way of 
violating his own commitment all the time. And that is why you have this right. Well, we have joining us to talk on the brain drain that is to hit Nigerian universities as a result of lecturers relocating abroad. Um, an educationist, Akinto Hassan, he is the chairman of the Nigerian Union of Teachers, Lagos State Chapter. Good evening. Good, Good evening, evening Mr. Madam. Hassan. Good evening. Good evening, madam. Oh, good evening. We also good have. Evening, madam. Good evening. I can hear you. And we also have joining him Professor Ndubisi yes. Ngokoma. Uh, he's a director, Center for Economic Policy Analysis and Research, University of Lagos. Glad to have you join us on the news tonight, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, many lecturers in Nigerian universities have left the nation to pursue uh, careers overseas as the federal government struggles to find a lasting solution to the ongoing crisis in the education sector. Where do you see this going? Where do you see this going? I start with you, uh, Mr. Hassan. Um, it is a normal reaction in a situation like this. The great men and women who are managing the future of this country by providing that significant service of developing human capacity have been relegated. What do you expect? It is in this nation that we don't believe in the future generation. Because if we believe in developing this nation, we will start from development but of in matter of human capacity. Months, the they have done everything humanly possible to show understanding to show the high level of commitment towards generating the kind of human capacity that we sustain the development and growth of this nation. But what? We, we, we appear to be having, um, we appear to be having a bit of challenge uh, hearing you, uh, Mr. Hassan. So, Mr. Nwokoma, please come in here. Where do you see this going? I hope your mic is better. <laughs> I hope so. Thankfully, well, it is. I can, hear you. I can hear you clearly. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, I can. Please go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much. I think the the answer is already blowing in the wind, as the song goes. Um, when uh, you walk in the place and you are not encouraged, I'm sure you know. Uh, as you walk in the TV station, if there are no incentives for you to stay there or to continue staying there, you have this challenge of whether you want to stay or whether you want to look for alternative uh, uh, means of survival. Uh, definitely in the university system, I'm in the system, and I know that uh, at the junior level, the, those who are entering the system, uh, junior lecturers actually uh, are leaving. Uh, for those of us who are, are, are you know, about to enter the departure lounge, you know, you have uh, or stay. And that is not good for, this, for the, um, the future of this country, because when you have the best hands living, it's not good for education. For example, somebody like me, I came into academics because I was invited back. I, 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 school, I, I in high school in Ibadan, and I was one of the best students in the in the economics department when I graduated. And that, there's a policy of inviting your best candidates. Mm -hmm to come back to, to, to make sure that the quality of the faculty is uh, very good, it's excellent. Mm -hmm. And you know, many of us actually joined because of that. And then we came in and we had all the encouragement, we had all the scholarship and all that. And you know, after some years, if you see how things are, are decaying, I, I left, I left, I, I went into banking and I came back later, you know. So I, the, the, it's, it's a problem 
when you don't encourage the younger ones to stay, they will find their way and they will leave. So I think it's it, government is damaging education unknowingly. It's not only for those who are there now, but for our children and children's children, they may not have good teachers tomorrow because those who are good, who can do, teach properly, are not being encouraged to stay. And I think it's a, a, a challenge that uh, they need to well, well, uh, tackle properly and make sure that they do not kill public education in Nigeria. Okay, well, as President Professor Oshodeko once said that there is no country in the world where uh, the lecturers, you know, go on strike and still have their salaries seized. What's your take on this particular view of his? Is it correct? Yes. I, 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 yes, I, I agree with the President. Of course, I'm an ASU member, which uh, by virtue of my working at the like, <laughs> so definitely I will defend my President. But I think apart from defending him, the facts are clear. Uh, when you are employed in the university system, you have uh, three assignments. Number one is teaching. Second is research. And third one is uh, service to the community. I'm talking to you now. I'm working. Because mm -hmm. by being uh, made available to enlighten the public on issues, either, you know, uh, on the economy, being my area, or on, on any issue, which I get such information, you know, from time to time, I'm serving. It's part of my work schedule, teaching, research, and community service. So that means if you are, for obvious reasons, if government makes you to withdraw one of those three, you are still working. So the idea that uh, there's no work, no pay to me, that is laughable because I'm, as you see, I'm still in the office, we are working. And, and it is so for many of my colleagues. So I, I believe government is just trying to fly the kite. They know it's something that cannot work. They've tried it before and it has never worked. The issue is that government needs to do the needful so that the teaching can resume and the, uh, the students can actually come to school. What is this and need for? There have been many issues being thrown up and down by the lawyers representing yeah. both the government and ASU. One of them is the method of payment. Can you enlighten us more on this? Well, the method of payment is some. Well, I don't want to comment on that because this is before the courts. Mm. So I think that that area of uh, whether you want to pay by this or that is before the court. The court will determine that, like the the government lawyers say. But I, I think the problems are very very clear. Government has not been has not tried to fund education. They've not made effort to fund education you know, uh, sufficiently. And uh, for somebody who is on the same salary for 13 years, I think that it, it's uh, not uh, it's not proper. So th there are many issues that need to be addressed. And uh, for many other people, the the high quality faculty, and I, I, I say this boldly, the high quality faculty in Nigeria are in public universities. Those who are linked to the UN, to the World Bank, I'm an economist. Mm. The World Bank, the, the high caliber faculty are in the public universities. So in, when you talk about uh, quality of those that teach the children, the high caliber, uh, they are, the public, the private universities are there, there are many of them actually grew up from our engagement with the private ones, and they, they are able to gradually begin to develop their faculty. But the people that really will help this country, the high caliber, I, I, I say boldly, they are in these high, uh, these old universities, in Soka, Ibadan, Lagos, and these other ones that are coming up. So if government abandons this caliber, they are damaging the future of this country. Well, the Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, has attributed the lingering strike action to the union's failure to come to a compromise, noting that no demand can be satisfied 100% uh, by any government. Uh, how do you respond to this? Yeah, I don't think ASU is asking for 100%. They have always been shifting ground. And I think the issue is that government will want to negotiate. They will have a committee set up. The committee will prepare their report, give to government, the government will throw it away, have another committee. So there has been no time that ASU has said we want to... So where do you so see being the middle happen. ground here? Where do you think, at what point do you think the government should get to uh, and the go uh, where ASU will feel okay? It's not 100%, ASU but we can go with this. ASU is saying we want collective bargaining which is not what the government has. Government says, take this or leave it. As you say, let us stop collective bargaining. Once we sit down, then we you know, do some horse trading. So government should come to the table and uh, engage in collective bargaining. Once they do that, whatever they arrive at, it's uh, okay for us. 
Well, thank you so much, Professor Ndubi Singokoma. He is a director, Center for Economic Policy Analysis and Research, University of Lagos. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah, we also had um, Mr. Akintoye Hassan, uh, the chairman of the Nigerian Union of Teachers, Lagos State Chapter. Unfortunately, the audio from his angle wasn't good enough uh, to continue the discussion with him. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.